Welcome to Dos Geek. I am so freaking excited to share with you this little thing right here, not this plastic thing, the little circuit board, the single board computer that's sitting on top of that, because that, my friends, is a Raspberry Pi 5. Now, I know this is kind of messy, and it's my really quick hack setup that I have here, because frankly, when I got this from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the first thing I had to do was pull it out of the box, put all the components into it, and get this thing booted up and started, because I was so excited. And the reason I'm so excited for Raspberry Pi is the endless possibilities this little device has. Whether you want to play in AI, you want to get involved in circuitry and home automation, you want to do your first programming, you want to use it as a desktop computer, this little low cost thing, sub $100 can do all of that. And Raspberry Pi has changed the entire landscape of Linux and open source as well. People talk about Android and things kind of changing the market for Linux. A lot of people like to use it to be like, oh, you're probably using Linux right now with your Android device. There's so much Google crap and everything else piled on top of that. Yes, there's a Linux kernel in there, but this is the first device, in my opinion, that really took Linux and made it mainstream, where it wasn't trying to hide the fact that it's Linux uh, based operating system that they have by default with it, which used to be called Raspbian for these devices. And you can do so many things with this device in, at such a low cost that it was able to be shipped across the entire world. People of all economic levels and capabilities could get their hands on this little device and do these amazing things. And what's more beautiful than that, especially when we're talking about open source, which is one of the main things that that can drive with the digital divide and other things, that this little device allows everybody to kind of play on that same playing field. And with its GPIO pins and other things, all of the advanced connections that you could do with it. And now we have a Raspberry Pi 5. We have the next generation of Raspberry Pi out. And let's just say it's very powerful. It's a lot more powerful than Raspberry Pi 4, which was a very powerful, capable single board computer. I'm just over the moon about some of the input output options that we have available, not necessarily for myself, but so that other hackers can go out there and create cool things that I can go copy. And so, cause you guys all innovate. I just kind of steal it. Uh, and then like, look, it's so cool. And my family gets impressed, but the reality is it's all the hackers out there in the community that figure out all kinds of cool, unique things. Uh, people like cubicle Nate, for instance, which is on a Linux out loud podcast. He does all kinds of amazing, cool things all the time with gadgetry and stuff like that. I'm just amazed by, and I think even the Raspberry Pi Foundation is amazed by what people have been able to do with this little computer. So when I got a chance to get my hands on the Raspberry Pi 5, I just had to make sure I share this video with you, talk to you about what it is, what are some of the connections and capabilities of this little device, and then I can't wait to see what the community can do with it. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the specs first. So before we go any further, we have to talk about the in-house silicon that was created by Raspberry Pi for this device. Remember I talked about how excited I was about all the input output options. Well, on a little device like this, or even a bigger device, this can create bottleneck issues. Basically too many instructions being sent across, nothing's controlling it with all the input output factors, and you can create collisions, you can create bottlenecks, there can be problems there. But this RP1 helps speed all of that up make that communication and transfer of all those input outputs faster. So everything from your USB, your MIPI connections, your connections for your drives, for your display, for your ethernet, all of that gets sped up thanks to this RP1 chip, which is 40 nanometer. Now I know those who are following this type of stuff are thinking about six nanometer CPUs, three nanometer CPUs, those type of things. But this doesn't have to be micro small. This doesn't have to be done at a three or six nanometer size. But the fact that this is the first in-house created silicon is incredible. And I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do with that technology next. But that's not the only new thing on this. We also have some new connection capabilities with the PCIe connection. This is the first time we've got a PCIe connection and PCIe or PCI Express is one of those connections that allows you basically to have an express lane direct to the CPU. So on your bigger computers, you would use PCIe for something like your graphics card, for instance. Here, there's going to be all kinds of hats and additional options. Really, the 
capabilities of it are endless. Anything that you're wanting to interface directly, it makes sense to interface directly with the PCIe and have that super fast lane there so you can have really great speeds that are coming from that PCIe Express uh, connection into that device, whatever you're running. Some people have even talked about and are starting to try to do putting an external GPU on a Raspberry Pi, which I applaud them and I cannot wait till it becomes something that's more mass market. But there's already things out there that are hats, for instance, uh, that you can add in that will allow you to connect NVMe drives and other things in there as well. So there's just a whole plethora of possibilities. All right, so reading through the specs here, we have a Broadcom BCM2712 2.4 gigahertz quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 CPU. What's that mean? Well, just know that it's about two to three times faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. So it's a much faster CPU we have in there. Also a much faster GPU. We got a video core seven GPU supporting OpenGL, ES 3.1, Vulkan 1.2. It can support dual 4K 60 HDMI display output with HDR support, but I've seen some videos on this and it starts to get a little bit and I'm not surprised, it starts to get a little bit laggy when you have two 4K displays set up on this. So in this case, this is a 1920 by 1080 display. I've had zero lag at all utilizing this. But if you were to connect those two 4K displays at 60 frames per second, and say we're running YouTube video on one at high quality, maybe even 4K or even local 4K footage, you're probably gonna run into some bottlenecks, especially with the dual monitors. So I wouldn't suggest pushing it there. Technically it can do it, which is cool, but I'm not sure they should really be advertising until they smooth that out. Maybe it's something they'll be able to fix in some hardware or software updates that is, but uh, I doubt it. So just keep in mind that it's very fast. It's very capable, probably not meant for two 4K 60 frames per second, although technically it can run them. You also get dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a micro SD card slot, two times USB 3.0 ports, supporting simultaneous five gigabyte per second operations, two USB 2.0 ports, gigabit ethernet with power over ethernet plus support, two times four lane MIPI camera display transceivers, PCI 2.0 interface, five volt, five amp DC power via USB-C with power delivery support, the 40 pin GPIO header, which allows you to do all kinds of amazing connections and capabilities with this device, a real-time clock powered from external battery, and perhaps the most important feature of all, an actual power button on the Raspberry Pi 5. And for those of you who've played with Raspberry Pis before, you know that when you wanted to power them off before, you had to just pull the plug. And for all those who've been around computers for a while, you know that it's not a great feeling the moments where you have to hard pull the plug on a computer uh, to turn it off or reset it or things. And that's what you had to do with the Raspberry Pi 5. And it was very capable, but having that little button there just kind of gives you that feeling of reassurance. You're powering it down when you click it, it'll pop up with the menu uh, in the OS and kind of ask you, do you want to power this off or not? It's just, it's nice to have a power button. How much does this thing cost? Three, $400 probably? No, you can get the four gigabyte variant for just 60 bucks, the eight gigabyte variant for $80 very much priced affordably for everything that you can do with this device. So all of those specs are really great, but those who aren't into hardware and all that stuff, they're like, okay, what can I do with that? Well, we kind of talked about the PCIe, that this allows for all kinds of different options for connections and different hats that we'll be able to explore in the future. So this just means more science projects, more hacking, more devices that we can interconnect with this, which is always a good thing. Additionally, all of these new IO options open up new doors for things like robotics, right? So different robotics and different abilities to control uh, different devices, motors, mechanisms, and things are opened up because we have more capabilities to connect new things to it. And you can utilize Raspberry Pis, for instance, to do some AI implementations, facial recognition, alarm systems, security, home automations, those type of things. And we just have more support now from the input output options that we have built onto the board to be able to successfully do those things. And so lots more projects available to you than what was available before in the Raspberry Pi, Pi 4, but that was still a very capable device.
Now, before we get into its little quirks, let's talk about the fact that you may be thinking about robotics and AI and automation and going, that's not for me. That's totally cool because you can utilize this little device as a little desktop PC as well. This is an amazing little setup for kids. So if you have kids and you want to introduce them to computing, what an amazing little device, very capable that they can go in there and do some gaming, especially some learning games, some coding, and they have some fantastic applications uh, in the Raspberry Pi Foundation recommendations and things on their website as well for programs that are drag and drop programming language. So you can start to get your kids interested in all of the cool things that are coming out in the future, right? Like robotics and STEM and programming, all of these different things uh, through this little computer here. They could do their homework on this device. I actually have this device right here connected into my Rode Procaster mixer board. So when I'm doing the Destination Linux podcast, for instance, I'm able to send music and effects and other things right from the Raspberry Pi into the mixer, into the actual videos and stuff itself. A lot of this we play with in between segments or beginning of show or the patron after show and other things but it's just a lot of fun to have all that power at your fingertips. And this little device is powering that connection through everything. Whatever I need to look up or send some sound files through, I can do all of that right from this device interconnected, thanks to all those IO outputs to my mixer. So the possibilities are endless and it acts in that way, just like a regular desktop computer or laptop computer that you would have You've got a fantastic operating system. You have the ability to access all the open source tools and things in there that you would expect from any Linux desktop. Now, there are some limitations. Obviously, if you're trying to do high-end gaming and those type of things, this isn't the device for that, obviously. You know, it's sub $100, depending on which version you get. You're 80 or 60 bucks. So don't expect to be playing, you know, Modern Warfare 3 on the thing, but it's still quite capable. Okay, but not everything is perfect with the Raspberry Pi 5, and you couldn't expect it to be for as low cost as this little device is. So what are some of the quirks of this device? Well, the first quirk that I kind of came up with is that it has a lot of great connections, a lot of those being the USB-A style connections, and now everything has moved to USB-C. So I find myself quite prohibited with the lack of USB-C. I've got lots of USB-A connection options, but a lot of my devices aren't USB-A anymore. So I kind of wish on the Raspberry Pi 5 we had more USB-C options. You only have one port and that gets used to power the device as well. And you can put splitters and other things in place, but this became a limitation right away. You've also got the mini HDMI in place of those USB-As because it's they take up a lot of space. It would be great to have actually a full size HDMI port they're available because out of the box, I imagine a lot of people don't have access to mini HDMI to full HDMI to power their monitors and other things out there. So that's one of those specialty things that you'll have to order. Speaking of which, you do have active cooling on this now, which some people have not been happy about that you have active cooling. To me, the fan is not very loud at all. Uh, I barely notice it spin up Ever. It's got active cooling on it, but I'm excited about that. You've got more power. Eventually, you're going to have to have some active cooling for that power there. It's a very small profile fan. It still allows you to put hats and things on top. It's built very well. It's easy to install. I'm not upset about the active cooling, but some people are. So for those who don't want active cooling, by the way, I ran it without the active cooler on it. Still runs. You're just going to throttle more. Uh, I don't know what the life cycle will be on that. Something somebody will have to test at some point to see if not having that active cooler on there will eventually lower its lifespan, but just know that's a thing. However, it does require five volt, five amp power supply that it didn't come with in the kit the Raspberry Pi Foundation sent, which is fine, I'm not complaining, but I imagine when you go order this, it's not gonna come with it either. And if you use your standard Raspberry Pi power supply or power brick that you got for your four and other things, it's not enough power to power this device anymore. And it makes sense. You've got a higher end CPU, higher end GPU, lots more input output ports and things like that to power uh, that it can power externally. So it immediately will come up. It'll still power on with that brick, but it'll immediately come up and tell you that, you know, it's not getting the full amount of power. So some of the external devices and things may not be able to be powered on with that, which means you're gonna have to buy another power brick for this device. They're not very expensive, about 12 to 15 bucks, but just keep that in mind. I could not find any third party either. So uh, probably those will come around as this device becomes more popular and out there in the market. 
but right now it's kind of a limitation. Let's talk about that PCIe port here real quick as we're talking about corks as well, because you can get a hat. I think it's by Pineapple or another company that goes on there, allows you to connect NVMe and things in there. Um, but there's no PCIe ribbon connector that I could find anywhere on any of the sites like Amazon or stuff that would allow me to connect into this mini PCIe port. So you're going to have to buy additional hats and things like that. Maybe they'll make a third party ribbon uh, that will allow you to connect other uh, to other devices and things. But these are some of the limitations of the new connections right now that we haven't had available before is a lot of people haven't been out there making components for it because this whole Raspberry Pi 5 thing was a big surprise to a lot of people. So I imagine as the months go on, the third party peripherals will definitely pick up and we'll have a lot more options available to us. Just know right now, it was very difficult for me to find anything like that for this device. Uh, but I've got a case coming, for instance, which I'm very excited about. And I also have the power brick that I'll need to kind of get the full power out of this. And then when those other components come out, I'll be able to connect those up and do some cool things with this device. Now let's talk about final thoughts. My final thoughts on this is I'm very worried about Raspberry Pi because I love this company. I love this foundation. I love everything they do. Why am I worried about them? Because the supply chain has continued to haunt this company well past other companies getting past it, you know, the GPU market and other things. And what that has done is created this widening gap of other companies who've come in and created very powerful single board computers as well. Raspberry Pi set the standard and they still are the standard for many kits, Lego robotic kits, other things. They're kind of the standard device that a lot of places use for their instructions and manuals. And if you're just getting into learning those things, you're gonna to wanna to follow those exactly. And they're probably gonna recommend specifically Raspberry Pi. But because of the supply chain issue and the issue of getting hold of these, it's taken me over a year to get a Raspberry Pi 4 module because I refuse to pay scalper prices. Basically, the scalpers among supply chain issues and other things have completely, not purposefully, but inadvertently started to kind of rot on this company's dominance. And while I think competition is a great thing, and I'm happy there are other single board computers out there, I just worry that Raspberry Pi 5, will it be available to the masses because they've not done anything specific that I've seen to kind of keep the scalpers away from this device. So while it's suggested MSRP is gonna be 60 or $80, are we gonna end up seeing this for $150, $200 because scalpers get a hold of it and ruin the thing for everybody else, which seems to be this new stupid thing then trend that everybody's doing. It's as dumb as the Tide Pod thing. Uh, anyways, this this is my biggest concern for Raspberry Pi. If I were you, I'd try to get my hands on one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think I'm right about the supply chain issue? Are you excited about the Raspberry Pi 5? What are some projects you would do with this? I'm also gonna try to release tips, tricks, or maybe just show off some of the things that I've done with this. Definitely already started doing some Python programming. It's actually up on the screen now on this little device just to show that it can be done. It's just something I really enjoy with the Raspberry Pi 5. And I enjoy the keyboard and mouse as well. I mean, they're not your like super high-end keyboard and mouse, but I love the color scheme. I love that it all matches. So once I have the case here, this setup's gonna look dope. All right, until next time, get out there and fill your brains.